Ah, that'll probably work. Yeah, oh, this confirmation is taking a bit long. Ah, there it is. Okay, cool. So we are now recording, so you can watch it back in case you miss anything. Uh, another teacher's class will also be recorded because I plan to do this class a bit differently. Since I've been teaching this class for um, three years now, this is the sixth time, I've noticed some things that work better and some things that work less better. Namely, the um, focus on the class is, as you can see in the fourth bullet point there, a bit too much maybe on grammar. And that is also partially my design and also partially because this is a course taught on a non-profit basis. So we don't make any money off of it, which also means we don't get paid. We're volunteers and we teach you out of the goodness of our hearts because we are passionate about language, because we had an experience in uh, a foreign country which we really liked or whatever, for whatever reason. Um, that does mean that many of us are not trained teachers. Some of them, some of us are. And some of us just have experience in teaching through this course, like me. Um, but that does make it so that some of us don't have much of experience, which is nice for you because the course is very cheap, only like 10, 15 euros, something like that. Very cheap for language course. Um, <laughs> good of us. Um, but because we have a lot of volunteers, the easiest way to teach people things is through teaching you just showing you grammar and then hoping you absorb that through osmosis at a certain point. Um, I have learned that that's not the most efficient way to learn language. It is a way to learn language. You'll get it at a certain point, but the best way is through doing things that are difficult in the language you're trying to learn. Things that are more difficult than you're comfortable with. Uh, that sounds a bit extreme, but it's just like slightly more difficult than you're comfortable with. And I will try to steer away a bit from the main um, content of the normal course. Uh, for, so we might not follow the booklet every time. I think for this lesson, I have not that much time to prepare anything very drastic because adding people to the teams is always an enormous joy. <laughs> uh, I'm very glad you all made it through that uh, process. Um, but so we might veer away from things a little bit. If And if you think, that's a bit, you were veering away too much from whatever the golden mean is of language teaching. Um, some other teachers who follow the course in a more linear fashion will also be recording the course. So you can also check them out. And if you like them more, feel, feel free to send, maybe you'll feel weird sending me a message, but send someone of the course a message and you can switch, whatever. I don't think I'll be doing anything that weird, but just in case. <laughs> Uh, so here it says, indeed, uh, it's a focus. The focus is on speaking and grammar. I'll try to make the focus a bit more on speaking, and this time the focus will also be more on reading and listening. But you're already listening to me, and I'll try to speak a bit more Dutch than I normally do. Um, it is an introduction to the Dutch language, as you might know, because it's, it's a beginner's course. Uh, but what does that concretely mean? What are the learning goals? Uh, at the end of the course, we hope you will be able to have like short conversations um, in like everyday situations. That's a very basic goal of like a language course. Uh, more concretely, it's being able to make appointments with people, um, kind of get around in public transportation a bit, um, order food or drinks at a bar or restaurant, not respectively, but all the way around. Uh, although at the moment, that's not your immediate concern, I hope. <laughs> Although you can take away, it works. Um, just know some general words, know how to express. What do, you, what do I want, want you to express? Um, express things. <laughs> I can make that more concrete later. But um, at, in, at least at the beginning of every lesson, we'll go over what concretely we want you to learn. Um, in general, the basics you would expect to be able to do in language course. Um, the basics being a bit broad, but yes, we can't unfortunately, we can unfortunately not teach you everything. And crucially, in the lessons themselves, there won't be that much time to learn vocabulary. But uh, we'll get to that uh, just before the break. We have a way of offsetting that. So, uh, spoiler, it's Duolingo, but then we can monitor you, but we'll get, we'll get to that in a bit. Um, there, was, there, will, there will be 13 lessons, 
uh, spanning 12 topics. The 12 topics is because the last lesson is the final lesson. Wow, that's very good. Uh, it's the final lesson, and there we will be doing some a short presentation. You'll have to prepare a presentation in by yourself or in a group of two of th or three, whatever you prefer, and depending on how much you like your co-students. Um, on a topic that you pick in Dutch for of approximately five minutes. Now, it is important to know that in this course, we won't be really grading anything. Um, so don't worry about that. You don't, uh, yeah, we won't be, won't be too harsh on the feedback. Um, but also in between, there won't be any grading. There will be homework, uh, but we'll just go through it together, discuss it, see if you are, got it correct or wrong. Uh, Hopefully, you, of course, you got correct because I'll be teaching you. Uh, um, and it will work out. I lost my train of thought. Um, every lesson is 90 minutes. We have a break of about 10 to 15 minutes. Given the amount of uh, that I ramble, it can lean towards 10 minutes. But I, we, I will always give you a break because it's almost never better to skip it, I've learned. So don't worry about that. Um, you got your booklet. I have it also. Uh, but not at hand. Uh, in the booklet, there is a lot, uh, usually a lot of explanation of the specific things, um, kind of in a different way than I will bring it during the lesson. There is, at the end of every lesson, there's homework, which we expect you to do before the next lesson. It's not that much. We'll discuss it. Uh, it's mostly to see whether the things we covered in the lesson stuck. And there is a word list at the end of every lesson, which has words that are relevant for that particular lesson. Whoa. Um, that has been moved from last semester, where it was at the end of the booklet, and no one was looking at it, to at the end of the lesson. So hopefully, now you will look at it. If not, alas. Um, any other things I need to mention? Yes, we'll be using Teams, as you have seen. Uh, I guess that most of you are kind of familiar with it. Uh, we'll also be using Kahoot quite a lot. Yay, depending on whether you like that or not. Uh, mostly for a quiz at the end of most lessons uh, to see whether things stuck. And occasionally, like in a bit, to just get some quick questions in. Um, there are other solutions. We might change that during the course of the course. But I'll let you know. Uh, that's enough rambling. Um, oh, last thing. Um, feel, always feel very free to interrupt me uh, with questions, either by raising your hand, typing in a chat, as someone did. And they typed. Can you repeat where you find the booklet? Yes, I can. Um, so I'll finish this train of thought. Uh, so asking the question in a chat or just unmuting yourself and asking a question directly if you feel comfortable with that. If you don't, then you don't have to do that. Uh, just raise your hand. I'll keep an eye out. I have you in a small thingy. Yes, indeed. You can find it in the files tab of the general channel. So not this channel, but in the general one. Uh, there's the class assignments, class materials, whatever, and there it is. There's also some other crap that team gives you, like a private notebook and other things, but I have not found a use for that. If you like doing that, scribble something in a one notebook in Teams. OK, um, that was my ramble at the beginning. Any starting questions before we embark our journey into the Dutch language? No, fantastic. Let us continue. Yes, before that, I will say this. Yeah, we uh, dedication, enthusiasm, blah, 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 blah. Um, importantly, we will, at the end of the course, if you attend nine times, including the last lesson, you have to be there, or at least do a replacement exercise. Uh, you'll get a certificate signed by some ASN and the career services saying, oh, we did the beginner's course. Unfortunately, there is not a A1, B1, whatever, CEFR rating attached to it, because I don't think we can legally give you that. But for your reference, this course aims to be about A1, low A2 level at the end. So you'll be able to do basic conversations and stuff. Uh, if you, after this last, after this class, think, wow, that was great, I want more, then next semester there is an intermediate course you can follow, which is approximately A2, A2, B1 level. And possibly after that there is an advanced course, but we'll see about that. I still need to make it. Um, 
But that absence, we can be a bit generous about that if you send me an email beforehand or a chat through Microsoft Teams. Um, not too generous though. If you just attend three lessons and show up on the last one, then unfortunately we can't give you a certificate saying that you did the course because you did not. But of course you're all here and I expect every single one of you to be there every single time. All right, then finally we can start after half an hour. So the theme of this week, we, every week we have a theme. Uh, the theme is Kenneth Maken. So uh, I'll do this a couple of times and it is, sounds stupid because I can't hear you, but I'll do it anyway. Uh, which is, is me saying a word and then asking you to repeat it. Um, sounds stupid saying it to yourself, but studies show that this helps. Uh, it's called shadowing or mirroring. I don't know what it is. So. I'll do it and I'll say repeat after me and then I say it again and then you repeat. Okay, so repeat after me. Kenneth Smaken. Fantastic, you did a great job. I will do that so many times. Okay, so what will we do today? We'll first do a little introduction. Through Kahoot, fun. Um, I'd rather hear every one of you say something, but experience has shown that that takes a long time. Uh, so instead, we'll do a little Kahoot and get some general view of who you are, what you're doing, what you want, um, what your political opinions are. No, we don't do that. Um, and then at the end of the course uh, lesson, you'll have a little chance to chat with each other. So then we have the, oh wait, this is the introduction, the introduction round, that's the introduction round. Uh, we'll have the board from the week, which we have every week. We have a fun Dutch word, well, fun, quote unquote. Sometimes it's fun, sometimes it's just a word. Um, then the majority of this lesson will be de dedicated to pronunciation. How do you pronounce Dutch words? And how do you know what sounds correspond to which words? Um, seems like a good way to start off a course. Um, I always find it very frustrating. Well, well, sorry. If I learn a new language, I would like to know how to pronounce things. And more importantly, if I hear something that I sort of know what they're saying. Uh, this can be quite difficult if you don't know how to pronounce all the words. So that's what we're practicing today. And mostly me pronouncing things and then you say, knowing what they are. Uh, after that, we'll have a little speed date round where you get to know each other a little bit. Um, then we'll have a little, 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 little quiz and then it's already done. Ah, so brief. Okay, so let us begin with greetings. How do you say hi in Dutch? I guess you already know a couple of these. So, hoi, everyone's favorite. Just a little hi. You can also say hey in Dutch. That just sounds like hey. And hello, just hello. Very interesting. Um, I'm guessing you already know how to pronounce these, so I won't go too much into detail. If you're feeling a bit more fancy, more formal, you're meaning the queen as you do. Uh, we don't have a queen, king. Um, and you don't want to say hi to the queen, king, you can say goedemorgen, goedemorgen, or if it's morning, if it's afternoon, you can say goedemiddag, goedemiddag, and if it's in the evening, you can say goedenavond, goedenavond. So maybe you can practice the first one. You can already warm up your throat to the infamous Dutch G. So repeat after me. Goedemorgen. Good, good. Well, it is not morning, it is afternoon. So I will ask you, how is it going? With, how are you doing? Because I'm a bit concerned because you said good morning, even though it is not. So then you could say, hoe gaat het? Hoe gaat het? How's it going? How are you? And then being the person that you are, you don't want to give away your deepest feelings, you say goed, and with jou, goed, goed meaning good, and with jou meaning and with you, literally, although in English you wouldn't really say that. Uh, and then that other person also just will reply ook goed, ook goed, so ook means also or as well. Great, I know how to say things. Now, uh, this is where I will uh, grab the Kahoot instead of following the slides. Uh, so if you would be so kind as to already 
either on your phone or somewhere else, go to www.kahoot.it and punch in the code I will give to you in just a second. Then we will get to know each other a little bit better. Mm -mm. And I will share my other screen instead. If my poor, poor computer can handle that. Mm -mm. Yeah. So you should be able to see the Kahoot now. Nice and rectangular. Maybe make that a little less rectangular. Yes. And we'll just do a little classic one. Oh yeah, the code is an important part. There it is. And this will just be like five questions. This is gonna see who we all are. And I'll contribute as well, although what my experience, where I am from, might not be that uh, of an interest, interesting of a question. Okay, 12 people already. We are with 18. It's always the fun, the fun part of, uh, of the course, waiting for everyone to join the quiz. Never gets old. And we are not now with 19. One more person joined. Hello, one more person. I, I will take attendance, but uh, I don't have to do it myself because I can just download the list. Oh, that is me. Sorry. Uh, I'm kind of confused. <laughs> what do I have to do? But apparently, I am muted. Or I have muted myself. What? It's not very useful. Can you try repeating yourself. Um, I'm just okay. So it's Kahoot, right? Hello. <laughs> Ah. But do I have to register? Ah, yes. No. Hi. No, with Kahoot, you can just put in the pin and uh, you don't have to register anything. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that's my first time. You need to go on the phone. It's better than on computer. Ah. Thank you for helping people troubleshoot. I can ask. Or just you can just go to a website. Just... Website. Okay. Running the app is uh, a bit of issue. Of course, I need to share like a Hoot song with you. Otherwise, it's barely a, a quiz. Oh, and someone dropped out of the quiz. Okay, found it. Uh, first day will be the first time will be a bit rough and next smooth sailing. Aha, okay, cool, you're in. Fantastic. Perfect. I'm really sorry for for, for being so much late and on the very first class. I I just uh, I mean I just got started in, into one meeting and it, it kept it's extending, extending, and 
I, I didn't get any room to get out of that. So mm. sorry for that. No worries. I was late as well. So you you joined at the perfect time. Thank you. All right. Okay. Let's 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 begin. So the, this is your intermediate course because I think your your level is so high. You can do this. You can answer some basic introduction questions. So first, waar kom je vandaan? Where are you from? So it is timed. That is not very nice. Uh, hopefully, you could answer the question within 20 seconds. Now, it should not be that of a diff difficult of a question. I hope. Ooh, it's already forming. Very cool. I've never tried this mouse, so this is pretty nice. Ooh, the UK, Lithuania, Germany, Portugal, the UK, again, Vancouver, Deutschland. Ooh, some tryhards here. Ireland, Deutschland, and Frankrijk, South Africa, Australia, India, Boston. And where are you from? <laughs> Very literal interpretation of the question. Very good job. <laughs> nice. Quite a varied background. Very cool. Waar woon je nu? Where are you living now? Are you all living in Utrecht or are you taking this class from abroad? That is also interesting to know. Again, I could ask you this directly, but it would be here forever. Ooh, all the thing up. India, abroad, Vancouver. Wow, the most popular answer is Utrecht. Who could have guessed that? Well, glad to hear a lot of you can still be here in Utrecht, uh, even giving the thing. But also great that uh, a lot of you can take the course from India all the way. That's very cool. In Trinidad, nice. Abroad, nice. Keep your anonymity. Don't share your data. And some from and someone from Vancouver all the way there. Very cool. Very cool. All right, another word cloud. So, what are you studying? This might be some a bit more varied. I promised I was uh, going to join in on the answers. So, I'm from the Netherlands, surprisingly, and I am living in Utrecht at the moment. Also, very surprising. And I think I mentioned what I study. The beautiful mess of words, history and philosophy of science. This is uh, looking very varied. All right, everyone answered. Public health, gender studies, law and economics, music, new media and DC. Oh. Could, you, could you elaborate what the DC stands for? Whomever answered that. Yeah, so it's, a, it's digital cultures, but the space was too small. <laughs> Ah, yeah, you can only answer like 20, 20 words. Very cool. New media and digital cultures. Oh, international development, medieval studies. Oh, that's uh, that's awesome. Economics, sustainability, Western science and business administration, psychology, sustainable business, global criminology. Sick. Organizational sci, marine science. Ah, oh, you're studying some cool shit. Very nice, very nice. And uh, next. Welke ervaring met de Nederlandse taal heb je? So what is your previous experience learning Dutch? Have you ever tried to learn Dutch? Uh, just picked some up, Duolingo a bit, or is this your very first attempt at um, learning anything Dutch related? Very interested to hear. Ooh, quite some varied answers, although that might be because Duolingo, uh, Kahoot find it so difficult. Um, I will just cut it off because otherwise it, it takes too long. Yes. Sorry, person whose answer we don't have. All right, let us see. Very brief introduction, first time ever. Babbel, ah, okay. Babbel is also a thing. Dutch friends, Duolingo. 
picked up some through school, Duolingo, help from housemates, Duolingo and friends, Erasmus, first course, nope, nothing. Okay, so a lot of uh, first time people and a lot of Duolingo, I see. Very good, very good. Uh, although, so, so two people did a Babbel and a very brief intro. Although Babbel is also an app, you also have Babbel, the B-A-B-E-L, which is like a language course, right? Yes. All right. Well, glad we're all starting from relatively the same level then. And what will you learn? What is your, like, what is one thing that you want to at least be able to do after this course? It's good to set the learning goals for yourself. According to pedagogy. Was it supposed to be a bit longer answer or? Uh. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> I, I cannot. Uh, if you want to elaborate on your answer. Okay, no, so. because it says 30 seconds. <laughs> okay. I just put over it. Okay. It's, yeah, it's a bit of a, a bit of pressure. I, yeah, unfortunately, that's how Kahoot works. We could use another thing, but then we, we, we would have you switching between apps all the time, and that sucks even more. Uh, understanding something, that's very good. Basic phrases, mm -hmm. have conversations. Okay, I can see, see that a lot. Small talk, nice. Basic conversation, easy conversations, day to day interactions, good foundation, socialist network, general talk, know the basics, supermarket conversation, order beer and food. Very cool, very cool. Does anyone have uh, maybe something specific they want to elaborate that the Kahoot word limit did not allow you to express? Uh, for me, I want to be able to attend coffee mornings at the place I'm doing my internship with and contribute something about what I've been doing at the weekend or just have some idea of what they're talking about. Ah, nice. That's a very concrete goal. And I think we'll definitely be able to uh, to do that. We're going to talk about plans and hobbies and days of the week pretty soon. So nice. All right. Thank you. Then we will move on. I think this is the no, it's the second to last one. Uh, now, this is really for the advanced course, so I will skip that. What topic do you find difficult? Uh, but since this is most of your first intro into Dutch, I can assume that it uh, will either be, uh, I don't know, or the G. Uh, and we'll get to the G in just a sec. So final one. What's your guilty pleasure? Always fun ice breaking question, you know, we're cool here. Yes. <laughs> Funnily enough, in Dutch, we don't have a word for this, even though we like to translate English words. And I should contribute to my own shit. There's true crime, beer and Netflix, alcohol, no guilt in pleasure, hey, nice. Wine during courses, hey, nice. I think also studies have shown that if you are a bit intoxicated, you are actually better at speaking your target language. It not, doesn't even, not even uh, appears to you that way, you actually are. So good. Wine during courses, chips, chocolate, chocolate. Yes. I would also say for me, it is chocolate, which is out of reach for me now, which is very good. Okay, good. I feel like we grew closer as friends now, and now we are finally able to actually start the course. Um, so since we have squandered enough time, uh, normally I'd put a, the break approximately here, but I'll first do a bit of the pronunciation and then we will go to the break, if that is okay with you. If, uh, please let me know if you think, um, when you think I am taking too much time to get to the break, because I, I tend to be okay with that, but if I don't, if you think, nah, Thomas, we really need a break right now, this is ridiculous, feel free to interrupt me. Okay. Now, on the topic of introductions, uh, this is one thing I didn't really ask you because I can see your names uh, and you will be talking to each other in a bit, uh, so you will be able to ask this. Uh, but it is useful to know, how do, you, how do you introduce yourself to people? Well, most important thing is usually your name. Uh, and in Dutch, you can ask this in, like th in three different ways, which basically all do the same thing. The first one is, uh, and repeat after me, who hate yay? Who hate yay? Yes. Uh, which is, what are you called? What is uh, like, uh, we heist do? 
in German. Uh, and you answer with that, ik hate Thomas. Ik hate Thomas. I am Thomas. Uh, and your name is something different, probably. I know, because none of you are called Thomas. Um, you can also ask, what is your name? If you want to be a bit more direct. Okay, what's your name? What is your name? And you can say, my name is, my name is. Or even more direct, wie ben jij? When they break into your room at night. And they say, oh, who are you? And then you can say, ik ben, ik ben Thomas. Very difficult. So, finally, we get, went to the word of the week. You, you, normally, I aim for this to be in done in the first 15 minutes, but this is the first lesson. It is a bit of a trial and error, as always. Um, the first word of the week is probably one of the most famous Dutch words. Uh, and please, again, repeat after me. Gezellig. Gezellig. Which is gezellig. It's a very difficult to translate word. Uh, but roughly, it means either the atmosphere in a setting you can see here when you're having fun with friends or family or just with whatever, or as a kind of a general adverb plus adjective to describe almost any kind of nice social situation. If you just came for a party from a party and someone asks you how was it, you say yeah, it was gezellig, it was nice, it was fun. Um, sometimes it gets translated literally as cozy. And while cozy things can be gezellig, they don't have to be. It's not a very apt translation, I would say. Um, in case you were wondering what those weird symbols at the bottom are, those, that is uh, IPA, the International Phonetic Alphabet, which is a way to standardize pronunciation and is given after most words in the booklet. Um, I won't go into much detail about it. It's more for people who know it and find it fun. Uh, I learned this at a certain point and I got kind of too much into it and then I wanted to put it everywhere. Um, uh, I think it's very helpful for learning a new language because it just every letter represents one sound, probably. Um, and so you don't really have to, if you don't know a language, you don't have to guess how it is pronounced. You can just kind of read it. Uh, at the end of your booklet in appendix, in the appendix A or B, I'm not sure which one, uh, there is more explanation about this and a comparison of all like uh, Dutch sounds with sounds from like major, from most major languages. So Spanish, German, French, no, not major lang most major languages, but just the ones sort of know or think sh or whatever. A uh, very biased list. French, German, uh, Spanish, Mandarin, and one more, uh, English. Uh, English. That's a pretty important one because that's the one we're speaking right now. Um, so you can check that. I hope it correlates a bit. Uh, I did ask people who speak those languages uh, because for me it's of course difficult to know how to pronounce Chinese, for instance, uh, Mandarin. So I hope it's useful for some of you. Although I don't, I'm not sure. No one mentioned they were from China, so I'm, I don't think you speak Mandarin. But maybe you're interested in that. Then the alphabet. Wow, this is the alphabet we use in Dutch. It is the Latin alphabet. It's very wow, horrifying, you know. Um, here we see all the letters we use. Uh, normally I would go through these, but I don't think they're actually very useful. So I'll just mention the ones that are pronounced significantly differently than English, than in English. Uh, and those are the letter A. So in English it's pronounced A or A uh, sometimes, or A, A, whatever. In Dutch it is pronounced as A, A uh, or A, A. We'll go into more detail about that difference later. The E in English pronounces E usually or A uh, or uh. uh. In Dutch it pronounces A, A, so like this letter, or um, E, eh, E. Eh. The F, I'll get to that in a second when I get to the V. The G, the G is probably most dramatically different letter from English. Uh, in Dutch it's almost never pronounced like the J in giant or the G in goal. Um, the g in goal is only used for loan words from English, so just goal. Uh, but in all other words that are Dutch, we pronounce it as either. <laughs> so try to repeat after me. <laughs> it is really, it's a really weird sound. Uh, it's a combination, yeah, like scraping your throat a bit. But it shouldn't hurt. You'll get to use that. Um, 
or if you hate that sound, which under you could understandably do so, and this pronunciation of the letter is more common approximately from here and to the north of the Netherlands. From here until the south of the Netherlands to Maastricht uh, and below to like Brussels, they don't speak Dutch there, but there's the line approximately, Flanders, they pronounce the G more like like um, I'm not sure, I don't want to find a correlate in another language, it's too difficult. But it's a very different, this is the soft G, we call it in Dutch. Um, I don't pronounce it like that because I'm from the north of the Netherlands, from Friesland. Uh, and so I will say in this course. And that is kind of the more standard pronunciation in Dutch. As most people in the Randstad, the area to the west of Utrecht, where all the major cities are, also always pronounce it as g, and all news is made there and most people live there. So most exposure most Dutch people have is to this G. Uh, so it's good to know and good to try. If you are able to pronounce it, you'll sound very Dutch. And if not, you also sound Dutch. Then the I in, in Dutch English usually pronounces I or E. In Dutch it pronounces E or E. So similar. The J in Dutch is also very different. The J in English is pronounced as J, almost never as Y. And in Dutch, it is pronounced as y, y, like the Y in English, like you uh, in Dutch, jij, pronounced the same as with the G at least. Then we skip a lot of letters, the K, L, M, N are, are, are almost all the same. The L has some thingy, but that's not important right now. Um, the O, in English, I'm not sure why this is colored differently. It is practically identical to the English one. So in Dutch, it's more O. In English, O. If you didn't notice a difference, then ignore it. Um, or as O. In English, it can be pronounced more as A, like in orange. Um, and in Dutch, it's almost always O. O. Really round lips. Then P and Q are the same. Very diff uh, difficult letters. Finally, uh, not finally, the R is also very different. In Dutch, we actually have three ways of pronouncing the R, all of which are considered acceptable. Um, one of which is very standard, uh, and one of which I cannot do because apparently I can't speak properly proper Dutch. Um, so we'll start with the one I can't do, which is the rolling R. You pronounce this with, by rolling, uh, trilling your tongue against the, up your upper teeth, like in Spanish or Italian R but a bit less, a bit shorter. Mm, it's a bit embarrassing if I do it. Uh, so I cannot, I cannot pronounce it like this. Um, if you are not able to do it, that's totally fine. A lot of Dutch speakers can't, including me. Um, in fact, over pronouncing this uh, is fine, but you'll sound more like a newscaster from the 70s, which is a cool sound, uh, but maybe not one which everyone wants to aim for. Um, instead, you can try the second R, which is more like the German and French R, which is pronounced as R, uh, in varying shades of trilling. So it's made with by trilling your uvula at the back of your throat. So R is a very a, a, an enunciated version of that, and a less enunciated version would be R, sound more like a G almost. R or R. Kind of, uh, uh, a good word to practice this with is rar, which is weird, which you could describe the R in Dutch with. Then finally, we have the what I will call the English R and what the Dutch call the Goois R, uh, which is very kind of specific to a small region to the west of Utrecht, het Gooi, uh, and it's pronounced as R, R. Uh, so kind of similar to English R, if I were to do an English R with the same sound, it would be R, R, R. Yeah, it's kind of almost identical. So you can use this R as the Dutch R. That's totally fine. That's a totally standard pronunciation. The only association people from Netherlands have with that is that it is very specifically from this region to the west of Utrecht. And this region to the west of Utrecht has some stereotypes associated with it, which you might not want to be associated with. Um, it's kind of new money, people who th people acting very, who act very posh, um, but maybe are not. 
uh, or what even is posh, you know, but whatever. Uh, there is some stereotype associated with, it, with, with this R, so use at your own peril. <laughs> what is good to know is that a lot of Dutch people kind of default to this R at the end of words. So a lot of Dutch people wouldn't say weird as raar or with the other R, but as raar, raar. So the R at the end usually becomes this one. That's totally fine. The other way around, that does not work. So you can't say raar, raar. That sounds very weird. Ah. So pick one, uh, or at the end, you can use the uh, English R. Then S and T, kind of similar. The S in Dutch is maybe a bit different than English, but who cares? Uh, the U, the U is very different. And this is a sound that a lot of, not that many languages have. In Dutch it is pronounced as, so repeat after me, U, U. So the English, so the U, the U, this letter, is never pronounced as U in Dutch, never. It's always pronounced as either U or E. And we'll get to when you use what, when. Um, if you have trouble making a sound, which you could have, but I can't hear you, so I don't know, uh, you can make it by what I like to call mimicking an ambulance, um, because the U is pronounced by saying E, which almost every language can, this has, and then rounding your lips very aggressively. So E, 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 so, so you become an ambulance and then you can pronounce the E. Ooh, ee, ee. So it's the same sound but around lips, same area of your mouth you use. Um, that might take a while to stick. It is, for some people, it's very easy. So for Germans, you have the U. Uh, French also has some sound that is similar. Uh, but a lot of other languages, Roman languages, for instance, don't really have this sound. So it can be difficult. Uh, but if you nail it, whatever. Very, uh, what, not whatever, great job. Then we get to the V. The V in Dutch, uh, V, um, can sound a lot like the F. Uh, so it is actually pronounced as the same as English. Uh, so that's why I didn't make it pink. But a lot of Dutch speakers, including myself, will, instead of saying uh, the V, will just say the F instead, because uh, we're lazy or can't speak our own language properly, maybe. Um, so you'll hear me just use the F almost all the time because I don't really make a distinction between those two. Um, so the word for fish in Dutch starts with a V. So properly you would say vis, vis. Um, but to me, that sounds very much like the next letter. We'll do that too. So I will say fis, fis. Uh, some Dutch speakers make a very clear separation between that, some don't. Um, you can choose if your language makes a clear separation between those, which they probably do, then just do that. Um, next, and finally, the letter that's very different from English is the Dutch W. So the Dutch W is n almost never pronounced as the English W, like W, W, but more like the V. So it's pronounced as V, V. It's made by kind of pulling your lips over your teeth, V, V. And it is almost the same as the V, but without expulsed, expul I never know this word, ejecting a lot of air out of your mouth. <laughs> uh, so it's like a more shy V, 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 you're like, ooh, air, V, no air. Ah, you have to leave, no worries, see you next week. Um, and that is all the letters in Dutch. Wow, now you can speak Dutch. Very good job. Um, I will skip this. Oh, I will skip this as well. I should have just used this slide, maybe more useful. Then, uh, staying with consonants a little bit more, um, we'll do this in a bit. Let's have a 10 minute break because this has gone on for long enough. Um, and we will pick up at 10 past seven. Bit of an ab abrupt end, but, uh, oh, before I do the abrupt end, uh, one small thing I need to say, we will still end at 10 past seven, so if you really want to leave now or have to be whatever, you can go. Um, you can always do that, by the way. Uh, in this course, we will be using Duolingo to kind of 
supplement the vocabulary that we cannot t t uh, use in this uh, do in this course. And to do that, you, we can kind of track you uh, through Duolingo, uh, which means we can uh, give you assignments and we can show you uh, keep score basically of how many words you learn, um, which is very useful for us and also for you because it kind of forces you to use Duolingo instead of uh, just having that uh, mean, mean owl call you names and shaming you into using the app. And now it is us that shames you into using the app, which is obviously way better. To do so, and I will share the screen while we go on break, uh, you can follow the uh, instructions that I will show right now. It is very easy. Uh, and yeah, whatever it is, I have to say it is completely optional, so don't feel bad if you don't do it. Um, I can totally understand if you don't like being tracked or whatever. Um, and yeah, uh, don't feel bad about it. <laughs> but it can be fun. I hope this is the first time we're doing it, so it might not be fun. Mm. So here you go. So now you can see this. These are the instructions. So just click this link if you're on the computer or do this in the app. OK, cool. Then we'll see you back here at 10 past. Um, I'm sorry, I, I can barely read that. I don't know if it is okay. because of me, it's just too small. So all the steps and it's me. Oh, no, that's uh, probably not. That's it's probably in the not. files of this classroom. So you can just find that okay. PDF yourself. Oh, OK, good to know. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> OK, I'll just put the app instructions here. Because if you want to use it on mobile, on your whatever. OK, I'll just make my, my thingy bigger. Okay. Have a nice break. See you in a bit. Thank you. Hi, Thomas. Um, sorry, oh, are we still on break? I know we're on a break. I don't know if I can ask a question. It's not directly related to the work. I just wanted to know, um, obviously I 
I'm from South Africa, so I have Afrikaans knowledge. I'm not mm -hmm. sure, was I probably better off in the intermediate class because of the Afrikaans knowledge? Or should I rather see maybe after the third or fourth um, class that, to assess? That's a, hmm, that's a very interesting question. And I, I'm not exactly... I'm not exactly sure, actually, because I did I did see your um, yeah <laughs> what you said in your sign up that you are from South Africa and that you were wondering how much that would transfer. And I, I also wonder. I know that Afrikaans is pretty close to Dutch, um, like very close. When I I can I can understand Afrikaans sort of. Um, yeah. So I would feel like maybe. It might make more sense, indeed, to join the intermediate class, um, because maybe the this class. I'm, I'm, I think this class will still have things that you don't know about that yes. or whatever. But I feel like it's more the that the pace might move a bit too slow for you. Yeah, because uh, I, I I went through the the booklet and. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, oh gosh, most of the things are similar. It's just obviously the pronunciation, which is something that I I want, and maybe the grammar. So I'm yeah. not sure if I should continue or if I should maybe look into the intermediate class as well and maybe do them concurrently if that's possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what you can try, so I, I'll be giving the intermediate class after this. Uh, All right. um, and the first intermediate class is recapping everything we do in the beginners course. Um, right. So if you want, you can join that. I mean, I'm not sure if you have time, but um, you could join that and see, oh, OK, well, now that I heard this, just a quick recap, then I can move on with the intermediate course. And then you're very free to join that. Unfortunately, you won't have the booklet, but you can see the booklet uh, online. Um, All right. And if you think, oh, well, no, that was a bit quick. Maybe it's good to do whatever or some combination of two, whatever you want. Uh, we can make it happen. We can make Thomas, it happen. Thomas, I'm actually, uh, I, I, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I I also would like to to see what the intermediate class might be like. So is it okay if I join as well? Because I I have some um, I have like German B two level, so like I ah, feel like some okay, of yeah. the pronunciation stuff is a bit different. But I, I'm just curious just to see what it might be like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, sure, of course. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Thank you so much. No worries. So I, I, I can't see your names at the moment, but uh, so. Anna Julia. Uh, I just, yes, Anna Julia. I'll, I'll pop a message so that you have it. If okay, I know cool. where the chat is. And, so, and okay. you both want to uh, have a look at the intermediate course. Yes, please. Fantastic. <laughs> cool. Then I'll uh, now you can stick around or you can join that uh, in an hour. OK. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. I might not be able to stay for the whole thing, but I just want to see what it might be like. If that's okay. Yeah. So the first the first hour of the intermediate course will be the recap, and the other will be more of an exercise. So okay. you can I'll, join. I'll, I'll stay as much course. as I can. <laughs> cool. Thank you. All right. See you there. All right. It Sorry, can I point. just um, ask something? Um, because a friend of mine would also be interested in taking part in, in this course. Um, is there any possibility for three spots left? Yes, there are. Yes? You can just direct your friend to the ticket sale and you can still buy a ticket. Ah, OK, cool. Yeah, thank you. But uh, yeah, of course, obviously, they'll only be able to join from next week. Yeah, uh, of course. Yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> but yeah, we'll, we'll keep the ticket still open a bit longer. OK. Because there also are always people who uh, join, later. join later. OK. Yeah, cool. cool. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. Then let's get right back into it.
Um, I'll just assume everyone's back because otherwise we'll never get anywhere. So welcome back. Um, sounds weird, aren't they? Um, just one more thing you need to know about Dutch pronunciation is how these weird combinations of vowel uh, co consonants are pronounced. Um, and there are three, basically. You have C and H, which is the pronounced uh, the same as G, uh, as G, like an acht or schat, uh, except when it is at the end of a word. So then you have to be kind of be careful. So socialistis. So at the end of a word, it's just an S. I don't know why they did that. In fact, like a, a it was actually a spelling reform approximately like 50 years ago. At first, it was spelled socialist T I E S, like how you would think it would be. And then they thought, no, 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 we need to make it a bit more pretentious and write it as S C H. Weird. Um, even though a lot of other words have been changed because they were written like this. Okay, weird. Whatever. Rant. Uh, <laughs> so, S uh, C H is. <laughs> Uh, with an S in front, it's if it's at the start of a word and at the end of the word. Cool. Then, just like in English, uh, N and G and N and K are not pronounced as N or N, but as N, like in ring, ring, or N, bank. So there's this sound. It's very fun to make on the sound. All right, so now you know everything you need to know about Dutch consonants, but we are not done with the vowels yet, which are next. Um, this is kind of the most important vowel distinction you need to know between lax and tense vowels, sometimes also called short and long vowels or checked and open vowels, if you want to be pretentious. Uh, but I will say lax and tense, and sometimes short and long, but short and long is confusing because that's not really the difference. They're not shorter or longer, they're different sounds. And they're shorter and longer. <laughs> but the shorter and longer obscures that fact. Um, what you need to know, if you look at, uh, I will just put this slide out of the way because I think this slide is more confusing than illuminating. If a vowel is at the end of a syllable, it is pronounced tense or long. If it is not, it is pronounced short or lax. That's it. When do you know that a vowel is at the end of a syllable if you see a big mess of words? Uh, well, that's those are those rules, and those are also in your booklet. Uh, but I think you can look at those rules if you want. But yeah, they won't teach you what the difference is. But that is the difference. If it is at the end of a syllable, it's tense. Uh, it's tense. Yes. If it's at the not end, it's lax. Very simple. Uh, you'll learn when syllables end and not by practice and learning words, or by looking at those rules in your booklet. But me telling you them will not help you. What will help you a little bit is knowing how to pronounce the different versions of the syllable. Uh, there is one exception to the end of the syllable thing. When there are two of the vowel, it is always tense. Um, so here we have a nice example. We have tak, which means branch, like of a tree, tree. And we have tak, which is a, a task, uh, which has two A's, so it's pronounced differently. So tak, this is tense, a uh, lex, and then tak, which is uh, tense. Um, here we have, again, takken where it is not at the end of a syllable, um, and therefore it is short, takken, which is branches, or taken, which is, here it is at the end of a syllable, the syllable ta, taken, and so it is tense, ah, ah, ah. Same goes for all the other ones. Ah, this slide is actually too big for itself. Um, we have heck, and hate, hacken, and haten. We have ik and ski. We have hicken and zien. 
So this is kind of the weird one. Um, the I doesn't become long if you put two I's next to each other. We never do that for some reason. We do I E. I don't know who decided that. It's kind of a dumb decision, but history or something. Um, then you'll just have to trust me on the O's uh, and the U's. The difference between O and uh, uh, the, the O's is O, O for the legs ones, and O, O for short ones. So we have bot, which means bone, and we have boat, which means boat. So the O is very similar to English. And then finally, the U, which is pronounced as E, and is an S in hut, which means hut, and as in U, as in foot. Which is kind of a bird. Kind of birds that they're not ducks, but they swim like ducks, but they have like a big pointy beak. Foot. So e, u, o, o, e, i, e, a, a, a. Ta da! No, no, that's wrong. Ah, you don't, because there's more, and those are these are harder. Uh, let's start from the bottom up, because this is easy. So I mentioned before that the, the, the U is never pronounced as U in Dutch, which is kind of similar to U, but it's not, you know, whatever, it's the same. Um, instead, the U is always written as O-E. So if you see O-E, that means U, always, no exceptions. So U, U, ta-da. Then we move one up, easier. Uh, still easy. Uh, it is either written as A U or O U, and it is ow. Ow. Like in how in English, or ow in Dutch, or hout, which means wood. Ow. It is written in two ways because uh, I don't know, it's annoying history. Then we get to probably the most, uh, again, from the bottom up. This one, UI, it's probably the most difficult sound to pronounce in Dutch. Even harder than the G, I would say. It is pronounced as, repeat after me, ow, ow. So how this is often pronounced by my internationals is as ow, ow, like this one. But they pronounce very differently. Um, of course, it's not bad if you pronounce it like diff differently because usually people know what you mean, blah, 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 blah. But I will just for now say how you do pronounce it. And if you want to pronounce it, the actual pronunciation, you start with kind of French, uh, like an oeuvre. Uh, that's probably bad French, but whatever. And then you go to u, o, o. But then you need to know how to do the uh, and that's even harder. So you can cheat by starting with a. Ah. That's easier to do, or a. Ah. So if you go from a ah to u, not to u, to u, Ow, 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 and then you're there, basically. The key difference is not ending on u, um, but on u, and then you're there. I should explain this a little bit more. These are diphthongs, uh, twee klanken, sounds that, two vowel sounds that kind of morph into one. So you start with one and then end the other, that's what I mean. Uh, and English has tons of these, like o, Starts as O and goes to O, o or A goes to like in hey go from starts from E and goes to E A. Um, Dutch does also a lot, but they are maybe a bit harder. Um, so we're almost there. Stay strong. Uh, we have A. Repeat that for me. A starts at E, ends at E. A A. Uh, also written two different ways, uh, sometimes even in one. You have maybe seen Albert Heijn, the biggest supermarket in the Netherlands, uh, is written E-I-J. That's kind of an old spelling uh, when they just put them together. Uh, and some, somewhere along the 20th century, someone thought, nah, that doesn't look right. Let's have two. And now we spell it in two different ways, and you, you just have to know which one it is. I'm sorry. Uh, A. Uh, on its own, it means egg. This on its own means onion. This on its own doesn't mean anything. And it is pronounced as O. O. Uh, also, by Belgians, they pronounce it as O. 
they don't do the U at the end. So you start at U, that's kind of hard place to start, but whatever. And then you end at U, U, as in nose, which is your nose. So from the top, repeat after me. O, A, O, O, oh, sorry, I did it wrong. O, <laughs> and U. The last one actually, actually a trick one. It's not a diphthong, but it just spelled with two letters. So we'll put it here. All right, you did it. You now know how to pronounce Dutch. Good job. You're a natural. Normally we would do dictation exercise here, but because I fucked around for 15 minutes trying to get the PowerPoint and stuff to work, uh, we do not have time for that. So we will start the next lesson with this. And uh, this is just a little kind of little test to see, uh, to practice recognizing Dutch sounds when someone says them. Um, that is best moeilijk. That is pretty difficult. Learning this, how to discretize sound from like input in how normal people speak in a new language. It's very difficult because people do not speak in discrete segments of words. They just all put them together. And that is what this will practice. We will practice it next week. For now, uh, oh, that's our, those are answers. <laughs> um, what I do want to practice, and I just want to, I'm just itching to try it out, is to put you uh, briefly in breakout rooms and just have you introduce yourself to each other. Very briefly, I'll give you three minutes each time. I will do it three times. Uh, every time you will hopefully be uh, matched up with a random person. And what you will do is go through this dialogue with your lovely partner and just kind of get to know each other. First, we will go through the, the, I will go through the dialogue with my imaginary partner. So you can have a kind of a, a feel for how it is to be pronounced. So we start with the most um probing question you can ask which is uh who out ben you who out ben you how old are you uh i would recommend starting with what's your name but we already covered that so we'll skip it for time's sake and then you can say ik ben ja out i am this many years uh i hear you ask thomas please but i don't know what all the numbers are called ah never fear child on page nine, we can find all the numbers. We will cover them next week. Then, after giving Bear your secrets, you can probe him further and ask them where they live. Barbonia. We've already seen this, but I don't know which particular individual of you asked those questions. Waar woon je? And then you can say, ik woon in the name of your city or town. Sec uh, thirdly, waar kom je vandaan? Waar kom je vandaan? Where are you from? And then you can say, ik kom uit, ik kom uit Groningen, for me. Which is in the north of the Netherlands. Then, wat studeer je? What do you study? Uh, ik studeer, blah, 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 blah. And then, welke talen spreek je? Which languages do you speak? And then you can say, ik spreek. And here we have a, a list of a lot of languages. It's definitely non-exhaustive, unfortunately. Um, if you have a question about a certain thing, and there's also place names with a lot of these. Not all of them, but I can't fit like 200 countries here, but I tried. Um, you can use these as a guide for answering these questions. Uh, and I've ranted long enough. I will put you in the groups uh, and I'll grab you out of them after three minutes and then put you in again. And we we'll, might go a little bit longer if you have to go. That's totally fine. Um, but let me know if you have to go because then I can see. Okay. Any questions about this lovely exercise? Very good, very good. Then. 20 people in one room. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good luck. Uh, okay. 
okay. Uh, I should have said good luck when I was actually opening the rooms and you were going, but here we are. Uh, so this is one by one. You'll get a notification, you'll be putting it automatically. Cool. Nice. It worked. Yeah, yeah, I was just uh <laughs> Yeah, hi, someone from the room that I was I think it's what's room five or something. Mm -hmm. And someone left, I don't know. <laughs> okay, but I can oh okay. There was someone in room ten also alone, so I was gonna add you there, but um then they also left. So we can just have the conversation briefly. So yeah. Oi, what is your, who ate you? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Who hates you? Who hates you? Oh, so is it like my name, right? So, it, okay, one moment. I know another question, which is, which is, what is your name? So I would answer, my name is Rosita. <laughs> what uh, is your name? Uh, my name is Thomas. Thomas, right. Okay, um, where do you live? I live in Utrecht, at the moment. Where do you live? Uh, ik woon in Litouwen, Lithuania. Ah, Litouwen. Okay. You are there at the moment as well. Um, I'll answer in English. Okay. I'm now in Lithuania, but okay. I'm planning to come. So nice. I'm trying to do step by step because I'm now working a bit and finished my studies recently. Mm -hmm. So, oh, nice. you know, COVID and stuff. Yeah, no, we're in so. Yeah, I hope I, I, I could come. I mean, not online studies, you know. Mm -hmm. Very so nice. That's my hope. Yeah, I hope so too. Um, I was gonna. I come you out of Litouwen? Are you, do you also come from uh, Lithuania? Do you also, are you also born there? Or are you just there by yeah. coincidence at the moment? I am. I've been. But uh, my name is not really usual as Litauen. Mm. <laughs> it's uh, more like Spanish, <laughs> you know. Ah, oh, okay, cool. I have to say, I am not that familiar with Lithuanian names, surprisingly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, really, um, if I would say Gabriela, Carolina, they are like ah. flexible, I mean, unflexible. Right. So. Um, what do you speak? You also speak different I speak, uh, ik spreek, right? I'm trying mm -hmm. to remember. Um, English, Engels, right? Mm -hmm. Engels, uh, Litauen. I'm not sure how to say in Dutch, but a bit of Russian. <laughs> ah, a bit of Russian. A bit of Russian. Ah, right, well. <laughs> nee, in Dutch. Nee, nee. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. You're yanked back. So uh, I knew, know that a few people need to leave now uh, and I'm going to put you in one more round for the people that want to stay. But if you want to leave, maybe leave now so you won't be assigned in the room again. Uh, I'm very sad, of course, if you leave now, but uh, well, it's OK. I'll see you next week. Yeah, see you next week. Thank <laughs> okay. you very Hopefully much. Thank you. For those who uh, <laughs> so, those who are obliged. OK. So. 
uh, for all those. Oh, that's not a good word. Uh, how do I close all the rooms? I did not practice that. Recreate rooms, fantastic. Okay, here we go. Couldn't delete rooms, please do. Yes. Okay. Put in people. We have these rooms. Okay. Here we go. And two, two, two. One room will have three people. Exciting. Have fun. Ah, I really should time this better. <laughs> Great. Hello. Hello. Welcome back. Welcome back. I hope I didn't too rudely interrupt your conversation, but I don't think there's a good way to do it. All right. Welcome back. Welcome back. I hope uh, you at least got to know two more people now. That's very nice, I think. Um, next week, we that was the end of this lesson. Let's start that. Uh, I hope you had fun. I did. Um, Next week, we will be starting a bit earlier and then have a lot more to do uh, because there's a lot of content next week. We will be learning so many things. Oh, you wouldn't believe. We'll be learning about numbers, how you count. We're learning about family, friends, 
all this, those things, not how to make friends. Uh, if you have any tips, let me know. Uh, we'll learn about um, verbs. Wow, your very first verbs. So cool. And no, that's it. That's already quite a lot. And we'll talk more. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. Um, for next week, um, I would like you to do the homework on page eight. It is not very difficult, I hope. Uh, I think. Um, and the homework you'll get assigned through Duolingo, if you perchance would like to participate in that. Uh, I think that will start, the assignment will start at like 8 p.m. now. I don't know what the time, what the good time is. And you'll have time until 5 p.m. next week at this time. So don't stress just before class. Ah, fuck, I need to learn a few words because that's not how you learn words. Um, yeah, so take a look if you find it interesting. If not, whatever. Uh, I will still, uh, if you don't check it out, I will still teach you a few words now. Saying goodbye in Dutch, very important. The first way, uh, let's start at uh, the middle one. Tot ziens, if you want to be formal, neutral. Doei, if you want to be casual, cool. Doei, 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 uh, if you want to be extra fun. Or what I will always say at the end, tot volgende week. See you next week. Tot volgende week. Tot volgende week, everyone. Doei. 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 Doei.